What's up all you Quantumaniacs? I'm Daquan Young and today we're ranking every NFL team that hasn't won a Super Bowl in the order we expect them to finally win it from. Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and make sure you hit the bell and turn on our notifications and join the notification squad. Don't forget to leave your video ideas down in the comments below. We're looking and we'll give you a shout out in the video we use it. Now 20 of the 32 NFL franchises have won at least one Super Bowl. There are four who never even appeared in one. Well, things change eventually. And in the 21st century alone, we've seen the Ravens, Patriots, Bucks, Saints, Seahawks, and Eagles all win their first Super Bowls. A handful of teams reach the big game for the first time in their history too. Well, it's only a matter of time until some of these long time losing teams turn it around and win their first championship. Let's go Lions. Number 12, the Detroit Lions. Seriously, number 12? In the Super Bowl era, the Detroit Lions have only been a true Super Bowl contender once. They reached the NFC Championship game in 1991, and they haven't come the slightest bit close otherwise. Since 1958, the Lions have one playoff victory. That was back in the aforementioned 91 campaign. They've only reached the playoffs three times in the 21st century, all wildcard round defeats. Unfortunately, the Lions also look to be the furthest away among the titleless teams from capturing their first Lombardi trophy. Quarterback Matthew Stafford is a stats machine, but he's not good enough to take Detroit to the promised land. The Lions have tried everything, even hiring former New England Patriots personnel and GM Bob Quinn and head coach Matt Patricia. They had a productive 2019 offseason, bringing in more former Patriots and Super Bowl winners in Danny Amendola and Trey Flowers. They also drafted stud tight end prospect TJ Hawkinson in round one. I don't know though, this team just doesn't seem to have enough talent on either side to win. The Lions always show they lack that it factor. And they're kind of way behind the other three teams in the NFC North. Unlike the Lions, the Bears, Packers, and Vikings all have championship caliber rosters. Number 11, the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, unlike the Lions, the Bengals have come close to winning the Super Bowl before, and they've enjoyed far more playoff bursts. Can we, can we hang off the Lions, please? The Bengals reached the Super Bowl twice in the 80s, losing to the San Francisco 49ers both times. They haven't won a playoff game since 1990, however, despite qualifying seven times between the 2005 and 15 seasons. The Bengals went one and done every year from 2011 to 15, and Marvin Lewis coached Cincy to three more non-playoff seasons before getting fired after the 2018 campaign. Now, the Bengals are back to square one. This is a dysfunctional organization that has always employed a great deal of troublemakers. Vontez Burfick, Pac-Man Jones, and now Joe Mixon. Owner Mike Brown doesn't spend money in free agency, and he simply doesn't seem to care enough about winning. While the Bengals endure mediocrity, the Cleveland Browns and Baltimore Ravens are being led by tremendous defenses and exciting young quarterbacks in Baker Mayfield and Lamar Jackson. And the Pittsburgh Steelers won't go quietly as long as they have Big Ben and Mike Tomlin. The Bengals have some great pieces on offense in Mixon, AJ Green, and Tyler Boyd, but the overall management is a mess and the defense is awful. We just don't see the Bengals going anywhere until they rebuild entirely, which includes moving on from Andy Dalton once and for all. Number 10, the Arizona Cardinals. Once the Chicago Cubs won the World Series in 2016, the Cardinals took over the dishonor of owning the longest championship drought among all North American sports teams. They last won it in 1947, when they were based in Chicago. They defeated the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL championship game. The Cardinals missed the playoffs during the entire 50s and 60s decades. The franchise was a disaster from the mid 70s up until the late 2000s. When Kurt Warner arrived, the organization changed for the better. Arizona made a surprise run to Super Bowl 43, where they narrowly fell to the Pittsburgh Steelers. But other than a trip to the 2015 NFC Championship game, the Cardinals haven't had much success over the past decade. Well, the Cardinals are now in a full rebuild, and they have a new quarterback in Heisman Trophy winner Kyler Murray and a rookie NFL head coach in Cliff Kingsbury. Too bad Arizona is playing in perhaps the most difficult division in all of football. Now there are some great pieces in place here, but it's gonna be a few years until we can expect the Cardinals to contend again. Expect this championship drought to reach at least 75 years, probably more. Number nine, the Carolina Panthers. For a franchise that only entered the NFL in 1995, the Panthers have certainly had more success than anybody could have expected. This is a team that has reached four NFC title games, plus Super Bowls 38 and 50, both heartbreaking losses. Cam Newton, the first overall pick from 2011, has gotten this team back into contention. 
We just don't think they're as close as the other non-Super Bowl winning teams. Carolina hasn't won a playoff game since reaching Super Bowl 50, and Cam's 2018 season was hampered by a shoulder injury, and it could hold them back quite a bit in 2019. The Panthers also lack dynamic playmakers on offense outside of Christian McCaffrey, and the secondary has been a problem since Josh Norman's departure in 2016. We still like Cam's chances of leading Carolina back to the Super Bowl, but it might not happen for a few more years. We simply can't classify Carolina as a bigger contender than the eight teams ahead of them. Number eight, the Minnesota Vikings. It's safe to say that no NFL team has gone through more devastating and crushing defeats than the Minnesota Vikings. They lost four Super Bowls between the 1969 and 76 seasons. And there was the Gary Anderson miscue. There was Brett Favre's costly interception. There was Blair Walsh missed gimme. There was that 2017 NFC Championship blowout loss that cost the Vikings a chance to host their own Super Bowl for crying out loud. Stop! He's already dead. We don't know what to think of this current team. Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, and Dalvin Cook form a dynamic offensive trio. The defense is elite, led by Harrison Smith, Anthony Barr, and Everson Griffin but we just don't have enough faith in Kirk Cousins when it comes to the big games. The O-line is a mess as well. That's why we can't see the Vikings ending a half a century of absolute misery anytime soon, even though the talent is right there for them to win. Now, number seven, the Buffalo Bills. The Bills lost four straight Super Bowl games in the 90s, and they've been quite irrelevant ever since. For example, they only ended an 18-year playoff drought in 2017, and that was a one-and-done loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars in the wildcard round. And the Bills might be terrible again in 2019 and 2020. But the main thing is, they have all the pieces in place to be a force in a few years. Josh Allen has all the makings to be a franchise quarterback, something this team hasn't had since Jim Kelly retired two decades ago. The defense, led by Micah Hyde, Tredavious White, and Ed Oliver, should be one of the NFL's best for a long time. And hey, Tom Brady has to retire at some point. And when that happens, the Bills might be ready to take over as the kings of the AFC East. By 2022, we expect the Bills to grow into a serious title contender. This rebuild isn't quite done yet, but the Bills are on the right track. Number six, the Los Angeles Chargers. Now we should have the Chargers higher on this list, but we just don't know how much long Phillip Rivers will play. And with no current successor in place, it's hard to rank the Chargers higher than six. The Chargers couldn't go anywhere with perennial Pro Bowler and Hall of Famer Dan Fouts, and they've had so many championship caliber teams since Rivers became the Chargers starter in 2006. You know when they had Hall of Fame running back LaDainian Tomlinson and Antonio Gates, which will be a future Hall of Famer? Somehow, the Chargers only have reached one AFC Championship game with Rivers. In fact, he's only led them to five playoff wins. Tom Brady has more Super Bowl rings than Rivers has postseason victories. Wow. 2019 might be Rivers' best chance yet to win a ring. He has Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and Melvin Gordon as his playmakers. The defense is elite with Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram, Derwin James, and Casey Hayward. But with Rivers entering his age 37 to 38 season, the window is closing fast. The Chargers might only have one or two more realistic shots at the Super Bowl before the future Hall of Famer retires. So right now, it's go time. Number five, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville entered the NFL in 1995. They made three AFC Championship game appearances, but have only made the playoffs once since the 08 season. And just when the Jaguars looked poised to build off a surprise run to the 2017 AFC Championship game, they fell apart entirely and finished last in the AFC South in 2018. Well, the franchise should return to the playoffs after signing Super Bowl 52 champion and MVP Nick Foles to an $88 million deal. He and running back Leonard Fournette should be able to carry this long time awful offense. And that defense is still as scary as they come. Calais Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe, and Miles Jack lead a ferocious front seven. AJ Boye and Jalen Ramsey might be the best cornerback duo in football right now. As long as Foles plays above average, the Jaguars will be a Super Bowl contender again. We love how Doug Marone and Tom Coughlin built this team. And we could totally see this small market franchise winning a Super Bowl in the next five years. Number four, the Atlanta Falcons. Like Rivers and the Chargers, Matt Ryan's Falcons have had so many chances to win a Super Bowl. They just find a way to fail every year. Like, man, how do you blow a 25 point lead in the Super Bowl? It's tough to trust the Falcons again after that. Or is it? On paper, this might be the most talented team in football. 
Ryan returned to his MVP-like form in 2018. And Calvin Ridley, Muhammad Sanu, and Julio Jones are one of the top wideout trios we've seen in recent memory. A healthy Devontae Freeman will power up the lethal rushing offense once again. And if that defense manages to avoid injuries in 2019, look out NFL. Keanu Neal, Deion Jones, Vic Beasley, and Grady Jarrett are all game changers. They'll help Atlanta vie for a Super Bowl for the remainder of Ryan's prime. Atlanta has a great mix of young and veteran talent, but can they just get over the hump and stop finding amazing ways to blow big games? If they can shrug it off, this team will soon win its first Super Bowl. Number three, the Houston Texans. We've talked about how the youngest NFL franchise, born in 2002, got worse in the 2019 offseason. Now with that said, it's hard to see how this team won't win eventually with a young star quarterback in Deshaun Watson, an elite wideout in DeAndre Hopkins, plus the game's best defensive player of this decade, JJ Watt. The Texans have only won three playoff games in their history, but you get the sense they'll break through eventually. Watson was a bit rusty and slow to recover from an ACL tear suffered in his rookie year. He played behind one horrible offensive line too that saw him get sacked 62 times. Well, the Texans are getting there. Their defensive front seven is lethal and a fully healthy Watson should emerge as an MVP candidate in the near future. It could be one year, three years, five years, or 10 years, but we can't help but think Watson will eventually deliver a Super Bowl to Houston. Number two, the Tennessee Titans. The Titans get a high ranking here for one reason, youth. This is one of the youngest, deepest, and most skilled teams in the NFL. Marcus Mariota hasn't even reached his full potential yet. Running back Derrick Henry is also just getting started. Corey Davis, Adam Humphreys, and rookie wideout AJ Brown are also young in age. Rookies Jeffrey Simmons and Amani Hooker should contribute nicely to a young defense that's led by underrated safety Kevin Byer. There are also some reliable veteran players in tight end Delaney Walker, Cameron Wake, and Wesley Woodard. The Titans are building up something special under GM John Robinson and head coach Mike Vrabel, all former Patriots. And with all that young talent, it's safe to say the Music City will host a Super Bowl parade at some point in the next decade. Number one, the Cleveland Browns. I can't believe we have the Browns this high, just like that. Prior to the 2018 season, everybody in the league had so much fun laughing at how dysfunctional and sad this franchise was. The Browns have never played in the Super Bowl but they've also never had a team this talented. Baker Mayfield is gonna be great. Now, he gets to work with a dynamic wideout duo consisting of Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. Nick Chubb powered the ground game in this rookie year and better things are ahead. On defense, Denzel Ward locks down the secondary. Miles Garrett has come every bit as advertised. He's a franchise changing pass rusher. And adding Sheldon Richardson to that D-line will only make things even scarier for the Browns' opposition. Cleveland has all of these young franchise players in place, and they have the cap space to add even more Pro Bowl talent down the road. And that's why we're classifying them as the best non-Super Bowl winner heading into the future. They're built to end the drought sooner than the 11 other teams. Now, what other non-Super Bowl winning teams do you think will win it all first? Join us in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps us out a ton and we truly appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.